And I live through you because I gave my body up for you. So can I use yours? And we say, yeah, absolutely, Lord. I'll take that free gift. And then we walk away for a minute. And then we turn around. And we put the chain back on. The title of this message was Unchained and Reclaimed. I think we got the unchained part clear. I'm here to tell you God's ready to reclaim. He wants what's his, and that's you. He wants what's his. He paid the ultimate price to set you free. You don't have to do those things anymore. You can have redemption. You can have salvation. He offers it freely. I'm telling you, we're about to, we're going to be doing an altar call, and I'm going to be the first one down here because it's time to step out of our, ourselves. It's time to walk out of the chains. If we're going to be what God has created us to be in this biker community and in this dark world, it's time to straighten up. And I admit it begins with me. Turn to Colossians chapter 1, please. Amen. Colossians 1, verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and covered us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now look down at verse 21. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. But God, that's why I just I take that home with me today. I, it keeps coming. But God, He knows. He knows who you are. He knows who you were. He knows what you struggle with. He knows what your addictions are. He knows about the bitterness that you still have in your heart. He knows about the anger that's weighing you down. He knows about the unforgiveness that you have for other people. And he knows about the unforgiveness you have for yourself. But God, who was so great in mercy, was able to put all that aside and come down here. <coughs> you guys are never going to break free unless I come down and snap those chains for you. And that's what he did. He came down and snapped those chains for you. You were once darkness but now you're a light. So walk as children of light. Yes. <clears throat> like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be opening the altar up. I know we're already over 7 o'clock now. So. But that's right. When the Holy Spirit is speaking, we don't want to box them up. No, we don't. We don't. Psalm 107. I'm sorry. Psalm 95. Very good verse 7. <coughs> Psalm 95. I want you to take this into your heart. We oftentimes want to receive that salvation. We want to believe that there's a God who loves us. We want to believe that there's a Christ who saved us. But I believe he really did have a message for you today. And with that, we want to give him praise. We want to be thankful for that gift that he's given us. And, and really take into consideration, allow him, ask him. For wisdom. And through this trial, ask him to bring to mind what is it? What is it that he's trying to purify you from? I could give you my laundry list, but we need to be here another hour. <coughs> what is it he's trying to remove from you so that you continue to grow? You know, I brought up the smoking, and again, that wasn't to, to, to try to convict anybody else here. That was the conviction God's given me. 
But I'm going to tell you, I'm taking my secrets to the altar today. I'm done. Because I can't be a slave to anything but God. And if I'm a slave to anything but God, yeah, you all heard smoke and stunts your growth, right? <laughs> it's even more true spiritually, all right? <laughs> that's, that's probably the reason I'm so short. Like, you don't need to pay no jokes, brother. I know. <laughs> Psalm 95. Oh, come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. This is where we are right now, brothers and sisters. We need to do this. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his. For he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Amen. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Today, if you, are, if you will hear his voice, listen, listen. He's talking right now. Today, if you will hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my word. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, It is a people who go astray in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. Amen. Today, if you hear his word, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Don't be like the Israelites who went astray in their hearts. He says, so I swore my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. When we come before God and we lay it down on the ground and the cross at his feet. And we say, Lord, I'm done. I'm asking you to take this from me right now. You promised to redeem me. You promised to break my chains. You promised to set me free. You promised to glow in me, Lord Jesus. And we come in faith and in love and in praise and worship. Something powerful happens. You get to walk in that. And believe this, that when you come to the altar and you give those things over to the Lord, it's real. It's real. Jesus said it is finished. When he died on that cross, he said it is finished. You don't have to deal with it anymore. All you have to do is bring it up here. Seek his face. Give it to him. Trust him. Like I said, I, I'm going to be the first one up here. I've got stuff I've got to lay before. So with that, I don't even have a right to be up here anymore. Um, Doug, Precious, you guys want to grab these buckets? We uh, at Heaven's Highway, this is a brand new thing, so we don't have membership. We do take up a collection, but if God says that he loves a cheerful giver, so if it's not on your heart to give, we ask you, please do not give. We don't want you giving grudgingly. But this is just an opportunity for anybody who God has led to sow into the ministry to go ahead and do so. And with that, I open the altar up.